Hello everybody, I'm Kelly Frankie, LMFT. I am just waiting on Lauren Rosen, who will be joining us shortly. We are gonna be talking about OCD and the workplace. Um, whoops. So, hold on, she's coming. I think. Are you dropping things over there? Yeah. Naturally. Naturally. Welcome to Monday. Hey, we got some big, big news that some of us might be bashful to share because, you know, it's related to Kelly. So I'm just going to go out and say it. First of all, tomorrow is her birthday, which Aww. happy birthday. Thanks. Super glad you were born. Um, <laughs> real good good thing so uh <laughs> i'm just saying i'm um, glad to be born most of the time do you know what i realized too actually hmm. you share a birthday with chrissy hodges is she march 1st yeah oh my gosh yeah. well i will wish her a happy birthday yeah wish them both a happy birthday but since kelly's here make sure to wish her a happy birthday and on her birthday she is going to be uh, entering into her own private practice, the Center for OCD. And so that's opening tomorrow. And I just wanted to acknowledge that and take a moment to celebrate. Thank you. No, no pressure. And also, hmm. ironically enough. Oh, right. Lauren's birthday happened <laughs> around this <laughs> couple, like a month ago. Um, mm -hmm. That's true. Around the same time, she opened her own practice. Separate incidences, I know. Very totally confusing. Very. But uh, yeah, so, so you can check out either of our websites. Uh, the, uh, it's center, it's W or no, HTTPS colon slash slash. <laughs> center for OCD.com. It's not That's a ready website. It's just kind of the bare bones, but you can reach me there. Yeah. Yep. And then you can also check out the obsessive mind.com if you're interested in seeing my stuff. But with all of that said, with all that launch, said, launch into talking about OCD in the workplace, shall we? <laughs> the irony. I know. Uh, let's do it. Let's do it. So what are the ways that you see it showing up most frequently in terms of obsessions and, and compulsivity in the workplace? I see it a lot with um, what if I do the wrong thing? Like what if I do the task wrong? Mm -hmm. um, am I saying this, am I typing this email appropriately? What if I um, accidentally have an, like write an obscenity or I offend mm -hmm. people? Um, I, this it's endless. It's just it's well, of endless. course. And you could have any variant to your point in the workplace. You could have harm obsessions about your boss, or if you work with kids, you might have and you have POCD. You might have obsessions around that. So it's not as though it's uh, sort of unique to some of the things that you mentioned. But at the same token, those are things that come up a lot in sort of your standard general workplace. Yeah, like the daily task stuff can be a, a bit overwhelming too. Um, if you're having intrusive thoughts and your OCD is like, Hey, every time we get a thought that we don't like, you're going to have to redo what you were just doing. Yeah. It, it can really happen. slow, slow down your progress. Is what yeah. It, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. In fact, uh, did you say you used to have that one? I mean, I still do. I just, well, <laughs> push through it. <laughs> Taste the rainbow. Um, yeah, I, I actually, cause I, I don't, I, many of you probably don't know this. I used to work in film and television and I worked in post-production and one of my jobs was to do the credits, like the end title cred credits. And that involves name spelling and checking of names and making sure that everything is right. Ooh. 
Boy, oh boy, did I have fun with that. Uh, well, I should say my OCD had fun with that because holy cannoli, I just, I would go over and over and over. Hey, look, it's Chrissy Hodges. And <gasps> Chrissy, Happy birthday, Chrissy. Chrissy, I just mentioned you because it's Kelly's birthday tomorrow too. True story. March first. First of the month. That's Payday. Right. Payday. Payday. Anyway. So. So but my point is that that's, that's one way in which, you know, that's a very random workplace task that most people don't have, but holy, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pisces, indeed, a sensitive little fish. Okay. <laughs> so um, what was I going to say? Oh, well. Obscenities? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just dropping all the really aggressive comments to somebody in a meeting too, right? Like, what if I do something um, inappropriate the meeting? What if, what I, if have... I forgot? Yeah, I was going to say, yes. what, what if I have done something inappropriate and I forgot and I blacked out? Ooh, blacked um, out. Yeah. I must black out all the time because I'm pretty sure I do a lot of aggressive, inappropriate things. <laughs> well, at least your brain would have you believe that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. One that's kind of recent in my mind of uh, is the this worry thought that they're staring at people's crotches is fun. Yeah. That's a fun one. It could be very fun, especially in the workplace where it's it's like another level of inappropriate. And then yeah. you might actually, and this is something that's that's come up that we've talked about and that has been talked about more recent or more frequently, more recently, it are the obsessions around cancel culture. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yep. the, the sort of, oh my gosh, what if I'm staring and that's taken as some sort of sexual harassment and then fill in the blank. I mean, it's a choose your own adventure kind of a situation. It always is. Yeah. Which yeah. is a great topic. So, and we'll definitely get to that on another day. For um, sure. So somebody had said earlier on about, is it normal to check emails um, compulsively, like rereading them? I believe that's what it was said. It was, I'm not going to scroll back. Yeah. I think that there is a line of like, what's like the normal or like the appropriate amount. So I think you have to be really honest and do a really honest inventory and say, I kind of know when things are getting a little compulsive, right? Like. Yeah. If it's an email that's going out to a bunch of people, that's relatively important. It might take, you know, a second gander. But other than that. Yeah. You, you want to maybe. Yeah. <laughs> into, okay. the, into the satellite, bounces back in yeah. your computer. Bam. Bam. Patrick's here. Hi, Patrick. Oh, I didn't see Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Um, so, yeah, I think, uh, what was I going to say? that it's pretty normal to reread an email once uh, just to sort of piggyback off of what you were saying and to sort of reinforce it as well. And I, I think it's funny because I don't even think about it and I check my emails once. Like just a quick read through oftentimes, unless it's a super long email yeah, yeah. and it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I, I think that, that if you catch yourself checking Likelihood is it's probably already gotten a little excessive. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah. So we, we covered everything from staring at crotches to, <laughs> to emails to saying obscenities. I love our job. I do. I know. Uh, I know. Um, yeah, I think. Oh, oh well, geez. I'm getting aggressive. You are getting microphone. in your job. Get it together. Yes. Get it together, woman. So I was going to say in terms of compulsivity, you might also find yourself reading and rereading. And this is one that comes up a lot in the context of school as well. Yeah. So uh, if you have to read something for your job and it's important that you understand and you're maybe reporting it to other people, you might read through something and then think, oh my gosh, did I read that correctly? Maybe I should read it again. And then so on and so forth. And it's especially hard with things like if you have any job that uh, deals in legal documents, right? Because there's, yeah. it, or something really. <laughs> 
Am I calling? I'm just thinking about. Yeah. No. Go. Go ahead. It's a no. You do it. Situation. Yeah. Well, so, just. Yeah. Go ahead. Do it. Legal. Be honest. No, just, <laughs> well, it's funny because it, with with the private practice going into private practice, there are a lot of legal documents that you have to review and you want to be thorough and thoughtful about. And if you're not it's a lawyer, important. Yeah. And if you're not a lawyer, it can, first of all, make you cross-eyed and want to fall asleep, which that's one thing. But also it really jacks up that, that urge to check. Like it's been really but, fun folks. It's been really fun. We've been, we've been in the midst of holding each other accountable and being like, okay, yeah, it's true. Walk away, walk away. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah, let it yeah. win. Yep. But I mean, yeah, it's by the way you, yeah. I know we're, we've got a lot of going off on tangents today with saying hello to people, but I did see Stuart Ralph of the OCD stories pop in and, and say a little Hi, st- hello. So I just want to say, obviously, I mean, I don't, can't imagine anyone who's here listening to us hasn't heard of the OCD yeah. stories, but if you haven't listened, please the go king. listen. Yes. The king. Um, so the one who started us all. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. He pioneered truth. Yeah. So what else what were we going to say? So ruminating, how about ruminating as a compulsion? Ruminating. Uh, oh, confessing. Ooh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yep. How would confessing. you, how, I, yeah. How would you see that coming up? Um, I've seen it come up with like the moral stuff and the fear that maybe, you know, they've taken too much change. So they're doubting their own eyes or they've um, maybe done something like wrong, even though they're defining the wrong to me. And I'm like, you know, I can't say that, but it's just way off the the radar. And so that can really get in the way, that kind of behavior really can get in the way directly and faster because it's, direct hit to your supervisor or your boss and they're like everything's fine so yeah yeah I've actually I worked with that's so interesting that you bring that up because I've worked with somebody who that one of their main compulsions was asking for reassurance from their boss and it did Uh, start to interfere it's one of those things it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy like I don't want to mess up and so I'm going to run every single small tiny thing past my boss but then my boss starts to get overwhelmed with all of my questions and so maybe my fear is that I'm going to get fired just for making a mistake and now maybe my job's on the line because I've asked for insane amounts of reassurance and and people are getting pretty tired it's definitely a, a really important fact to remember because if we're looking at reassurance in a family or a loved one going on, there's a quick burnout that goes on. So, yeah, you know, yeah. in a job, it's no different. Any sort of relationship, to your point, is going to potentially suffer because mm-hmm. of that excessive reassurance seeking. Yes. So... Mm-hmm. We do have a few questions. I don't know if we want to yeah, go. With- yeah. And I know we've, we've got a limited time today. So why don't, we, why don't we jump into the questions? And if you have any questions watching, we will do our best to answer some about uh, OCD in the workplace. We can always do another episode on this too. Yeah. Um, the other thing before we get into it is I just wanted to say we got a lot of questions. They're unrelated to the topic. We try to stay on topic because we then um, repurpose this content on other platforms. So we're, we're trying to keep it, you know, consistently with this topic. Yeah, absolutely. So that people can go back and find things that are relevant to them for education. We, I did just see a comment pop up. Um, how do you deal with unpleasant thoughts around your boss? I mean, Mm. has, I have a question. Mm ask it. (laughs) Has any, has anyone ever in the history of the world who's had a boss not had an intrusive thought about their boss or an, or just an unpleasant thought? I mean, Oh, you mean like, Oh, I'm so annoyed thought. 
Well, yeah. I mean, it depends on what our definition of unpleasant is, but when it comes to OCD, people could think, oh, I'm bad because I had a negative thought about that person or I had a harm thought or, right. And I think it's probably pretty common kind of like driving on the freeway to have, not to be totally reassuring, but you're on the freeway and somebody cuts you off in traffic, you are likely to have a little moment of, of road rage in your head. And so likewise, you know, bosses tend to piss people off because that's kind of part of the job. It's the MO. Yeah. You have to you be have the enforcer. To. That's the one, right? It's yeah. like saying, has anyone in the history of ever never had a negative thought about their parent, right? Well, probably not, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Although, yeah, and there are definitely people who have OCD who get concerned, very concerned about thoughts like that, you know? Yes. Like that, oh my gosh, I had a thought I didn't like my parent. Oh, really? Welcome. Welcome to the world of being <laughs> frustrated at your parents. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. And I, in addition to that, I think I lost it. Bam. Just, okay. Boom. Moving on. Okay. All right. It may or may not come back. Let's go on. We have a couple questions. So, okay. Um, this is person asked, is it normal to tell your boss or colleagues that you have OCD? Yeah, this is a good question. We talked about this. You want to give it a go? We, we did. Well, oh, I thought I did. I thought I mentioned that that might be a, a good thing to talk about. And I, I love okay. that this person brought it up is all. So yes. That's and right. I, I think in some instances, especially if your compulsions are coming up at work, and or you're in treatment and trying to navigate that, um, that it can be helpful to let people at work in. I mean, obviously not anyone or everyone. Uh, and being thoughtful about, about how you're telling somebody and in what context. But I, I can certainly see where it might be useful if you're really, really struggling to put that into context for somebody. Yeah. And, and also not doing it in a compulsive way. Like you're confessing and almost like you're getting um, almost their consent. Like, Hey, I am a person who lives with OCD and I have intrusive thoughts about harming children. Right. Are you okay with me working <laughs> here? So. <laughs> I need you to sign this consent form that says it's okay <laughs> that I work for you because I don't want to be held liable if I yep. lose my mind, right? Yep, yep. That's the totally, I can see yeah. that. Um, somebody back a few clicks here said, how do you deal with thoughts? How do you deal with the thoughts you will be fired? Let me tell you something, my friend. <laughs> I will always have those thoughts. Every time Tom calls, I'm getting fired today. What I do? Today's the day. Oh my, today's the day. He's calling. Today's the day. Well, well and the, the I was going to say, well, now that you're going to be off on your own, you might not deal as many, with as many thoughts like that. However. However, he's going to call again and I'll be like, shit, he's going to fire me. <laughs> You'll be like, wait, I don't even wait. work for him. Yeah, I I was also thinking that it it for us it pertains to our relationship to individual like so if you're self employed anyone who's self employed is going to have clients that they work with or a product that they're putting out there and people can still complain people can still you know I don't know sue you or whatever which is the you know <laughs> the equivalent to being fired when you can't actually be fired from your job because you're your boss. Yeah. The thoughts can still be You're there. welcome. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. We can probably go through one more. One more. Um, okay. And if anyone has uh, further questions or would like us to do a second episode on this, please feel free to email us at purelyocd at gmail.com. We're also happy to uh, take suggestions, not that 
we won't, if, if we answer your questions on here, it's still not therapy or a replacement or ther for therapy or therapeutic advice or anything like that, but we're happy to try and provide education around things that you're interested in. Yeah. Um, so this person asked, OCD often slows me down with tasks. How do I keep this from interfering with job performance? Mm. So it's tough. Yeah. Um, obviously we can't speak to your case specifically and we don't know the specifics, but um, I can tell you what, when I came back and into the OCD center where I work currently as of today in the last 10 years, as a therapist, I would often get stuck in, I have to feel right before I can open the door to see my next patient. Because mm -hmm. if I didn't feel right, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be in the right headspace to help them appropriately. Mm. So that doesn't go good when you have clients hourly back to back to back. You got to move quick. So mm. the thing that helped me the most was just moving really fast. Yeah. And that's, I, I think that ultimately the best thing that one can do to help themselves is to get into treatment and start doing exposure and ritual prevention, which, because the ritual prevention, when you're taking a long time doing compulsions is going to help rein in the amount of time that you're spending and is going to support your job performance, as well as your ability to engage in your life in a meaningful and fulfilling way. Very true. So true. But you know, Move fast. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 it might da. be. A, it's an exposure, you know. That's for, the thing. It doesn't matter what the task is. If you're, if it's slowing you down, move faster. It's just if you, you need to be in treatment in order to create what's, what is your fast and how to do it in a way that's built in with, you know, intentional exposures. Yeah. Yep. And I, I think, uh, one part of speeding up is being willing to do it imperfectly. Usually. Yes. Yeah. If you're, you're willing to go out and get your client when you don't feel just right, then you're not going to be slowed down. And if you're willing to do the good enough job, uh, writing that email and sending it off and you're, you're willing to accept that maybe you're, uh, you're going to write something profane in there. Then, then you're freed up. Yep. I'm aware of the time, so we probably yeah. got to wrap this bad boy up, but we should be back next week for another Ooh. episode. Yeah, we'll be back unless something really horrific happens. And in that case, well, you know, we'll have to accept we, uncertainty. We really hope you've enjoyed our <laughs> show. <laughs> So here's some uncertainty about whether or not we'll be back next week, but I hope you all have a ter terrific week and yes. uh, we will look forward to seeing you soon and happy birthday friend. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you in real time soon. Yes, you will. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.